three things to say to your highly sensitive child. Hi there, I'm Amy Laginus, the founder of HighlySensitiveParenthood.com, an online resource center for highly sensitive parents and highly sensitive children. Today I'm sharing on the topic of three things to say to your highly sensitive child. So if you, like me, are the parent of a highly sensitive or deeply feeling child, you likely know the struggle of trying to help your child through some intense emotions or challenging situations. So we want to strike this balance as parents of highly sensitive children in nourishing them, nurturing them, supporting them, being there for them through these periods of big emotions. But we also want to teach them how to manage them in healthy ways so that they can become resilient and they can become confident as they go out into the, the real world, into schools and sports teams and social situations that they can feel confident in knowing how to manage their own emotions. So the three things that you should be saying to your child on a regular basis include, number one, I'm so proud of you for blank. Number two, it's okay to feel blank. And number three, it looks like you are feeling blank. Would it help to blank? So each of these um, different phrases can be sort of customized to your child depending on their personality and their age and stage but I wanted to just give a bit of an overview on how you can use each one and how you might expect to see it um, create a positive change or impact in your child. So the first phrase we'll look at is, I'm so proud of you for blank. So telling your highly sensitive child that you're proud of them, I mean, it's just a good parenting strategy in general um, to build their confidence, to um, to help them feel seen by you. And it's totally okay to praise your child for accomplishments. Um, in my opinion, I know there's some parenting experts who say, oh, you shouldn't say, you know, great job on that test. Or like, I'm so proud of you for scoring that goal. I, I, I think that there, sh there should be a healthy balance with that, right? Um, sometimes we want to be praised for our accomplishments as adults too. But it's also really important to balance that out with um, I, I'm so proud of you for something that they've tried, for putting in effort, for showing up. So not making it always about the achievement, the, the grade, the, the score, um, et cetera, but really uh, praising or recognizing their unique attributes, their strengths, what they bring to the table. So for example, um, my kids are in soccer. Uh, I definitely still do say I'm proud of you for scoring that goal sometimes, but it, it, in my mind, it's even more important to say things like, I'm so proud of you for being a kind teammate, uh, for taking a knee when the kid on the other team got hurt, for trying some new skills out today. It looked like it really paid off. So really praising their, their efforts to be courageous, to try new things um, is especially important for highly sensitive children. Um, highly sensitive children have a strong pause to check mentality or, or tendency, meaning that they often need time to observe in a new situation to kind of um, take things in and check things out um, before jumping in. So it's, it's normal for them to take a little bit longer to adjust to a new situation or to kind of build up the courage to try something new. And that makes it even more important that we recognize and praise when they actually do try that new thing. So by praising your child's courage, their persistence and their effort, you are actually building resilience. You're building their sense of confidence and their sense that they are capable of trying new things and that it's valuable for them to try new things. So again, that's, I'm so proud of you for filling in the blank with something that's not always about um, a specific achievement. So let's move on to number two. It's okay to feel dot, dot, dot. So I will lead off with an acknowledgement that we don't always uh, understand our child's emotions or sometimes we 
think that they're they're extreme, they're reacting in an extreme way, or they're nonsensical. Um, so it can be really tempting, especially for parents who may not be as sensitive themselves, to say things like, oh, cheer up, it's not that big of a deal, or just stop crying, like, your brother didn't mean to push you, he just ran into you, it's not a big deal. So, so kind of trying to resolve the situation quickly in order to get your child to stop feeling this big feeling. And the, the intent is good usually. We want our child to stop feeling upset, but the execution is usually not all that helpful for highly sensitive children. So if we think about our own experience, let's like we can use ourselves as, as adults as an example. If you go back to um, your partner at the end of a long day at work and your boss chewed you out, um, would you want to be told like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like you still have a job, just it's fine. Uh, don't worry about it. Or would you want to be told, oh, that sucks, I'm really sorry, I totally get why you feel frustrated by this, it's not fair. And, you know, eventually down the road, maybe we can get into some problem solving and what what's the solution and how can we make this better. But how good does it feel when we have our, our partner or a friend or even ourselves um, there to validate our emotional experience? That sucks, that's really hard. Um, I'm so sorry to deal with that. And so bringing that into our parenting of our highly sensitive children uh, ultimately resolves the, the issue a lot more quickly because they feel validated. They, they feel like their emotions are heard and understood. So that's the reasoning behind this. Even if we're like, this is an overreaction to the situation, um, that's kind of the next step of resolving a challenge. But leading off with it's okay to feel that way, or I totally understand why you're feeling upset about this, or I'm sorry that you're feeling so sad about this. And then we can get into um, kind of a solution. So for example, you could say, I'm sorry that you're feeling so sad that your brother ran into you and you fell over. Let's take some time to cuddle. We can go talk to him about what happened um, once you've had some time to calm down instead of, come on, it's not that big of a deal. Just, uh, you don't need to cry about this. One of these is uh, tends to be a little more effective and calm um, than the other. So using this approach, you'll notice the tears dry up more quickly, the emotions kind of settle, and the situation resolves more quickly than if you try to deny or kind of push your child through their feelings too quickly. And lastly, an, uh, the third thing to say to your highly sensitive child on a regular basis is it looks like you are feeling blank. Would it help to blank? So one of the biggest challenges for highly sensitive people and, and children included is overstimulation. Um, with younger children especially, but even as they get older, sometimes they don't know that they're feeling overstimulated. They might look like deer in the headlights, they might start getting grumpy, they might even start kind of bouncing off the walls a little bit. Um, but they might just not know what to do with themselves just to, to feel better. and that is one of the things that we can do as parents is to teach them here's what i think you might be feeling and here's a possible way to kind of resolve that so i'll, I'll give an example let's say that you are at a um a play date at a children's museum and it's loud it's been a few hours a couple hours since lunchtime um there's just a lot of noise, there's a lot of movement, your child's kind of been going, 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 and you notice that they're starting to kind of like flag a little bit, their energy's lowering, they're looking grumpy, um, and or they're starting to get a little clingy. So you might say to them, you know, I've noticed, or that it's pretty loud in here, it looks like you're feeling uh, a little overwhelmed. Would it be helpful to, to go outside and have some lunch, or would it be helpful to, um, to head home and, and take a nap. So what you're doing with this, it's, it's two parts and both of them are really important for parenting a highly sensitive child, but also teaching them to thrive in their sensitivity. So the first part of it is you are acknowledging and helping them express what they're feeling uh, is. Um, it looks like you're feeling tired. It looks like you're overwhelmed. It looks like you're feeling upset about this. So you're putting, sometimes literally you're just putting a word to what your child's feeling. And sometimes you might be wrong, that's okay, but you're you're helping kind of build their emotional vocabulary and that's a really powerful gift you can offer to your child. So after you've, you've kind of acknowledged, hey, I think this is what you're feeling, or and it could be physical too, it's not necessarily always emotional. It could just be like, you are hungry, you are overwhelmed, you are tired. Um, 
but sometimes it's you're sad, you're hurt, you are frustrated. So you're, you're kind of helping them name it. And then secondly, you are offering um, sometimes some choices, but you're offering a clear path forward. So you're not just saying like, oh, you're hungry, that's too bad for you. You're saying, okay, you're hungry. Would it be helpful to fill in the blank and whatever it is? Would it be helpful to um, grab a snack? Do you want to, do you need to go potty? Um, do you need some time to yourself? Do you need a cuddle? And so you you know what your child's coping skills are. You're, you're learning them at least. And you can help to suggest to them what might be helpful in resolving whatever challenging emotion or physical sensation they are experiencing. So those are the three tips that I have for you. Things to incorporate into how you communicate with your child. Um, again, I'm so proud of you for it's okay to feel or I... I I am sorry that you feel this way. And then lastly, it looks like you're feeling blank. Would it help to blank? Or how about we blank? So if you are finding um, these tips helpful, I encourage you to um, continue to stay connected with me at HighlySensitiveParenthood.com, um, on my YouTube channel, Highly Sensitive Parenthood. And I also have a couple of more um, comprehensive resources for highly sensitive parents and parents of highly sensitive children. Um, including uh, courses that are self-paced, video-based, and really kind of get into depth about um, the highly sensitive person trait, either again as a parent or as a child and how you can support your highly sensitive child. Um, and some really uh, lovely resources within the courses that you can print off, that you can use to talk to other people in your child's life um, or other people in your life about the trait of high sensitivity and really reflect on um, both the challenges and the many gifts that the HSP trait brings to you and your family. So I'd love for you to check that out. You can find all of that at HighlySensitiveParenthood.com. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to uh, sharing more tips and ideas with you soon. For more resources, including our signature Highly Sensitive Parenthood online course, visit HighlySensitiveParenthood.com.